Ladies and gentlemen, come gather around, come gather around, come gather around. Today, we're going to be looking at brake lines. Look at that. Perfection every time. Let's go. I know. I didn't have a really good intro. We are doing the brake lines, and excitingly, it's not a super exciting task to watch. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe not. If you do, let me know. And if you don't, let me know, because there's always that. So in this case, we are trying to get brakes going on the back and front of the 61 Chevy Apache pickup. The back is a hodgepodge of mid-90s Camaro Z28 brake calipers on mid-90s Caprice rotors on a late 70s Ford F1, sorry, uh, it's an Econoline van 9-inch Ford axle. The front is... Uh, 73 to 87 suspension with modified control arms to fit 88 to 98 uh, spindles C1500 not C1500 might be C2500 they're 8600 GVW disc brakes on the front adapted to fit a square body front end we are also using a early 2000s Silverado Hydro Boost and Master Cylinder and what else are we doing? We've got, we're adding a line lock. And I didn't get any video shown of an adjustable proportioning valve for the back brakes. It's always a good idea to have some way of adjusting the proportion of pressure between the front and the back. And so I have an, a, a proportioning valve in there. Here we were trying to set up the, on the left side, the line to the T where the main feed comes into the back axle and now I'm trying to get the the rest of the right side done. So here's the fitting past the e-brake cable and there's the hydraulic line fitting. You're looking at the front side of the axle, it goes over the axle and you want to always think about making these look nice. It's a quite a challenge to make these look really good. It goes over the pumpkin using the factory clips on the axle into the T. I don't have the T sitting horizontal because there's a weld on the axle tube and I didn't like how that fit. Then we go back over the tube to the front of the axle again and into the hydraulic line flex fitting that goes to the cal caliper. Notice the air ride suspension. We have an air ride video coming up shortly. I believe the rear flex line is from a Camaro but I could be mistaken. I did list all the parts on my website, gwobble.com, because at some years, I'm going to need to replace these parts, and I ain't going to remember what they were. So I wrote it all down. This is a generic hydraulic line bender. And then this guy, coming out of the master cylinder, it's a good idea to have a couple loops before you head down to the rest of the frame, just to kind of diffuse the vibration that you might have between the frame of the truck and the cab, because this is... Certainly a cab on frame kind of thing. I am using polyurethane cab mounts. The, this being a 61, I believe it's 60 to 63. You cannot get cab mounts for these. So you use the 60 to 66 style, which is really the later style. But they're polyurethane, so I machine them like almost in half on the front. So it's probably going to be pretty firm and uncomfortable. The challenging bit is trying to snake all these lines up through the frame because it's a 61 there's an x in the middle of this frame gives it more rigidity but uh, is a little bit annoying to try to weasel things through it there are hydraulic line straightening tools that you can get uh, i'm cheap so i just spend my time on a vice trying to get it as straight as possible check out this tool it has these different adapters depending on what kind of flare you want to do and I've got the old school flares, but this is beauty. You set it to zero, which sets your depth. Lock it. S step one starts your inverted flare. Step two finishes your inverted flare. And it's perfection each and every stinking time. Oh my gosh. When I did my V8 Pontiac Firefly, which is essentially a V8 in a Chevy Sprint, um, I had a lot of leaking uh, hydraulic lines. So this, this was money well spent for sure. And then, using my handy tool, bending these, these lines. The 
the later master cylinder that I'm using from, I want to say, a GMT 800 chassis used significantly larger brake lines all the way back. But parts of the brake system don't use brake lines that fat. So trying to figure out what would work, and I did a whack of research, and the general consensus is it's hydraulic pressure, not volume. So it doesn't really matter if you have uh, fat brake lines or skinny brake lines. I don't know. So I'm running the smaller ones just because it fits and it connects to everything. The line lock uses the, th I thought I wanted to say 3 16 line. The parts on the axle use 3 16 line. So, and I think the front suspension used 3 16 So I'm just, that's just what I did. You can get nuts that can use whatever size line but still fit into whatever flare fitting you have. So that's what I used. Interestingly, with all of these fittings, I had zero, uh, I want to say fuel leaks. I had zero fuel leaks, but I had zero um, brake line leaks, which was awesome. So that fancy tool is phenomenal. A little bit pricey, but if you've ever had to cut your line shorter and shorter and shorter because you messed up the flare, oh my gosh, it's a godsend. Putting the lines through the frame and on the frame, you've got to find ways to secure it so that it's not going to vibrate or chafe against something or fatigue or get caught in something. So you usually need to figure out some kind of fancy clips to hold it all down so it doesn't go anywhere. Probably want to do this before you put the engine and transmission in, just saying, or the cab on. But uh, I don't always think everything all the way through. This, just a cheap eBay line lock or Amazon line lock. I neglected to show you the bracket I made to hold it on, but here it is. Sometimes I just get caught up in this project and I work on it instead of putting a video up for you guys. This is really my escape. Uh, this, this puts wind in my sails so I can face the day again. I don't really have a use for line lock. I don't really have an interest in going drag racing, but I've never done one. So why not? Why would you not? Right? Got to put one on just for giggles. It kit comes with a crazy little switch that you put on your column shift or floor shift, which I don't like. So I will be wiring up a kind of a foot pedal under the dash so I can apply it with my left foot. That way I can still work the shifter with my right hand and the gas pedal with my right foot. In my head it works. We'll see. Top it up with dot three. I usually buy a full container of brand new dot three whenever I'm putting in brake fluid and then I give the rest to the school because uh, brake fluid ages over time. It's hygroscopic and absorbs moisture out of the air. So you kind of want to avoid unnecessary collecting of moisture out of the air. I knew it was love when my sweetie was willing to sit in the car and help me bleed brakes. However, um, I'm working on my own today. So everybody's out and about doing things. Even had my kids help bleed brakes in the past. So this is just a cheap Mighty Vac equivalent. It just creates a vacuum and uh, used it to pull the fluid through the master cylinder all the way through all the brake lines. Took a long time to get it started, but uh, went pretty quick once it was going. And it's got a, got a good solid pedal feel. I may bleed them again just to make sure, but uh, I think we did pretty good. I have bled brakes by myself with an uh, engine vacuum up to a container like this. But this engine doesn't run yet. But it will soon, so stick around. But there it is, man. Brakes. Hope it works. We're going to find out. Doesn't even run yet, but uh, I'm feeling pretty saucy. So thanks for watching and uh, take care. We'll see you again.